Hello and welcome to part one of a course I'm going to be doing on here called Sound for Musicians. Sound for Musicians. And in this course I'm going to try and educate, demystify what sound is, how it behaves, what we should care about, what we shouldn't care about, why you should probably just go and play your bass or guitar rather than watch this. But if you can't be bothered, if you're having to do something else, if you're skiving at work or whatever, if you're in a place where there are no instruments, if you're looking to buy things, if you're looking to understand the minutiae of stuff, if you just want to know things, then I will endeavour to help you out. So this is part one of Sound for Musicians. We're going to try and break it down into small chunks because some of this takes a while to get your head around. So, what is sound? Well, it's a wave and it's to do with compression and rarefaction in air. So compression, I think we all can understand what compression is, squeezing something smaller. Rarefaction is simply the opposite of that, it is expanding. So it's air being compressed and expanded. It happens in other mediums, but we're talking about air because we are land mammals that operate in the Earth's atmosphere and, you know, that's that sort of what is it, 78% nitrogen, 20% oxygen and a couple of percent of everything else, something like that. Tiny little bit of CO2, slightly too much CO2 than there should be at the moment, which is a bit of a problem, but we're not going to dwell on that right now because I can't fix that. But, um, well, hopefully we can all help a bit individually. So, waves. It is a wave and there are two sorts of waves we can consider. There are transverse waves. So a transverse wave is where the wave is travelling in a direction, but its amplitude is changing across the wave, yeah? So light is a transverse wave, all electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. Uh, waves you see on the surface of the sea are transverse waves. So they're the easiest waves to visualise, ripples in water, transverse waves, easier to visualise and understand. Unfortunately air is harder to visualise because it is a longitudinal wave, so it expands and then it works to the peak where it's contracting. I should put another line in there, shouldn't I? Miss some out there, something like that. So this is, it's rarefied, then it's going to compressing at the peak and then we're going to the zenith and nadir, are they the right words? Expanding down to the nadir there and then up again to the zenith uh, where it's compressed and so on and so forth. So the air is compressing and rarefying and that is what you're hearing is push 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 so it's moving yeah so your sound wave is let me go sideways the sound wave is moving yeah my hand being the sound wave moving but the air in it is doing this while it's moving yeah and it's sort of the air isn't being blown, but the wave is moving. So wind changes things, we'll deal with that another point, but let's not overcomplicate things. So, it's a transverse wave, sorry, this is a transverse wave, sound is a longitudinal wave, and there's a few things we can use to describe waves. One of them is the wavelength, so here we have a wave. Let's zoom in on this so it's nice and clear. Right, so we've got our wave. This here, the y-axis, that's the amplitude of the wave, yeah? We're denoting it as a transverse wave because it's easier to understand, but remember, sound is always a longitudinal wave, we can't change that. Electrical waves, they're transverse waves, but this is a longitudinal wave. So, <clears throat> your wave goes, basically, the intensity increases, comes back to zero, the intensity decreases, or, or reverses, you could look at it, there's, there's two different ways of looking at that, but basically, up, down and when the wave crosses the x-axis so that's at zero again so we've gone up and it's downwards and it's come back up again that is one full wave cycle so that is one wavelength and if this y-axis is distance it is a wavelength but if this y-axis is time then it's the period so the period is how long in time it takes for the wave to happen and the wavelength is how long in distance it takes it to happen. So there we go. I'm going to start simple, stay in small bits. Let me know if that makes sense. Sound is a wave, it is a longitudinal wave and it has 
wavelength, period, and then amplitude, which I should have written on the graph. I'll do that on the next one. I'll be back. Thank you. I've been Alex from Barefaced. We make awesome things, but also we're going to teach the world stuff because it needs to know. End the misinformation. Goodbye. <laughs>